Antarctica, an eternal ice desert, is the fifth largest continent in terms of area, ahead of Europe and Australia. Around 98% of Antarctica is covered by ice with an average thickness of 1.6 kilometers, making it the most hostile place in the world. However, this did not prevent seafarers from a wide variety of countries from sailing there after its discovery in the year 1820 and claiming parts of it for their mother country. However, in order to create peaceful coexistence there and to keep Antarctica open to explorers from all nations, the Antarctic Treaty was signed by 12 states in the year 1959, which stipulated the peaceful use of Antarctica. But why do seven states continue to lay claim to large and small areas of Antarctica? And what does the future of Antarctica look like when the ice melts and sheer endless deposits of raw materials are uncovered? Will there be a battle for Antarctica? The myth of a vast continent in the south of the world has persisted since ancient times. It was assumed that there must be a huge land mass to counterbalance the land masses of the northern hemisphere. The first explorers believed that they had found part of this continent in South America and Australia. When this turned out to be wrong, however, the explorers continued to travel further and further south in search of the lost continent. The first person to sail through the Antarctic Circle was probably James Cook, who crossed it in the year 1773, but did not reach Antarctica due to pack ice. It said, I can boldly say that no man will ever venture farther than I, and that the lands that may lie to the south will never be explored. But only a few decades later, his statement turned out to be wrong. The title of the first person to actually see Antarctica was claimed by three seafarers. One was the captain of the Russian Imperial Navy Fabian Gottlieb von Bellingshausen, Edward Bransfield, a captain in the British Navy, and Nathaniel Palmer, an American seal trapper. All three reached Antarctica in the year 1820 independently of each other in a period of a few weeks. However, Fabian Gottlieb von Bellingshausen was probably the first of the three. However, it would be almost another hundred years before anyone actually reached the South Pole. In the year 1910, a race broke out between the Norwegian Roald Amundsen, who was also the first person to completely cross the Northwest Passage by ship, and the British Falcon Scott, who had already come very close to the South Pole on several Antarctic expeditions. A dramatic race ensued, but in the end it was the Norwegian Amundsen who was the first to complete the long crossing of Antarctica to the South Pole. Scott and his entire team, on the other hand, died on their return to their ship and their frozen bodies were later found in tents. It is indeed a very exciting and dramatic story, please write in the comments if you would like to see a video about it. In the period that followed, more and more countries began to declare territorial claims to Antarctica. As so often, the first to do so were the British, who declared the Antarctic Territory south of the Falkland Islands and South Georgia to be British. They were followed by New Zealand, France, Norway, Australia, Argentina and Chile. By the year 1946, only one sector remained independent. However, under pressure from the USA, the Soviet Union and other countries, the territorial claims were declared null and void and negotiations over Antarctica began. At the Antarctic Conference in the year 1059, the Antarctic Treaty was signed by 12 states and a peaceful solution was found. The treaty stipulated that Antarctica could only be used for scientific research and that any military activities on the continent were prohibited. Even though this meant that the territorial claims were off the table for the time being, they are still officially made by those seven countries, they were just frozen for the time being, so to speak. However, it has been prohibited for new countries to make territorial claims. However, it remains to be seen how the situation will develop. The treaty is initially valid until the year 2048, which is not that long away. It could then be renegotiated. Particularly due to climate change and the discovery of numerous raw materials, Antarctica will certainly play a central geopolitical role from this point onwards. Initial forecasts predict a huge amount of oil, coal and precious metals such as gold, silver and diamonds in the Antarctic. It will therefore depend on the global political situation over the next few decades whether a peaceful consensus can continue to be found for Antarctica or whether there will even be military conflicts over Antarctica, as there once were in colonial times. China in particular is forging ahead, opening numerous bases and aiming to become one of the most important nations in Antarctica. And many non-signatories to the Antarctic Treaty reject the status quo of Antarctica, seeing it as a geopolitical construct of the Cold War. As a result, many countries, even distant ones, are now building bases in Antarctica, initially for research purposes only, but also to increase the influence of those countries on the continent. What do you think the future of Antarctica will look like? 
Will the various nations be able to come together again or will economic and geopolitical ambitions prevail and Antarctica will be colonized in the coming decades?